Hi, I'm Gatrode and I'll show you how to use FreeCAD for your project. In this video, we'll take a quick tour of the FreeCAD interface to help you feel more comfortable with it. You can check which version you have. This tutorial is made for FreeCAD 1. When you start, you'll see nothing in the center. You need to open a new file. Once done, you'll see the small orientation cube appear and the workbench tools become usable. Here we have the workbench selection menu. I'm going to present two or three of them, the main ones, the most important ones. Personally, I mainly use the part design workbench. It's really the basic workbench for most designs. So every time you create a new file to start building something, you need to create a body. Once you've created the body, you'll see an origin appear. You can display the reference system. This allows you to attach the first construction elements of your object, which always starts at the body's origin. Here, just as an example, we'll create a sketch on the XY plane. We'll make a small rectangle starting from the origin, 25mm wide and 25mm high. The sketch turns green, which means all constraints are consistent. We close the sketch tool and extrude our sketch. The first volume is created. Once you've created your first body, you can continue with additional operations. For example, you can select a face, create a sketch on the face, do whatever you want, make a small diameter, and extrude it. We can also remove material. Another sketch will take a small hexagon, and then we remove material with this tool. Let's now return to interface questions. The important points of the workbench you've selected and these different icons that you can arrange as you like. Here you have the model tree in the model window that you can place wherever you want. I personally like to have it on the left. The other important window is the tasks window, where whenever you use a tool, you'll see the different elements related to the current tool execution appear. For the three orientation cube, as I mentioned before, you can display your body's reference system. You can move your body with the very useful transform tool. Right click on the body, Select Transform. If you select the red arrow, you stay only on the x-axis, with the green arrow only on the y-axis. If you take the blue plane, you can move in the y-plane. You can also rotate. All movements you make with the Transform tool are done in increments defined in the settings. Once you're lost relative to the common origin, you can always display the system's absolute reference. To display it, you need to close the Transform tool. You'll then see the central reference point of your file, so you can move your body relative to the reference. In the part design workbench, you have tools here to add material, extrusion, revolution. More complicated operations, we'll talk about those later. The blue and red icons are for material removal, drilling, threading. Here, you have secondary operations, fillet, chamfers, etc. Regarding the interface, I still need to show you the different display modes. For space orientation, you have different modes. We're in flat lines. We can remove the lines to have a somewhat realistic rendering, with lines but without shading. I don't use this often. The most useful mode for me is the wireframe display. It allows you to select different elements on the other side of the part without being obstructed by faces. So personally, I mainly use the wireframe mode and the flat lines mode. To rotate your part, if you've selected the CAD interface, you can click simultaneously on the middle mouse button and the right button. You can rotate in space in all directions of your part. This rotation is done around the small red point that appears. In this version of FreeCAD, you can select the point around which you want to rotate the part. You can zoom out with the wheel by rolling backward, zoom in by rolling forward. If you're completely lost, there's always a mode. Type VF, and it brings you back to the center of the image where your part is. Regarding the interface, you'll find the tools you have as icons always in a menu that appears, and is linked to the workbench you've chosen. Now let's look at the other major workbench, the part workbench. For me, part design is the most classical way to model mechanical geometry part. The part workbench is more about block assembly. It's more of what I call plotting, block construction. You can create bodies with predefined shapes, like a cube. Instead of making sketches, you have your cube directly, 
and then you can edit its different parameters, width, length. I still use it for designing and saving time. We can create a small cylinder and then we can move it. I find it's a good way to model when you're looking for ideas, when you're trying to see if something works or not. With this workbench, what's important is that we can perform operations. We can either merge the two objects together to make them a single object or remove material. If we cancel the operation with the arrows here, we can take the cube and remove the interference with the cylinder using the cut operation, and it leaves you with the result of the interference between the two parts. These Boolean operations are useful and I regularly use them in classical modeling too. There are other interesting tools we'll talk about later for making cuts or all sorts of things. This workbench is complementary to the part design workbench. You can really use both together. For example, here we have the body we created before, and now this new part. We can assemble them approximately like this, then merge them. All this makes a single part. Then, if you want to do more classical operations, you can return to the part design workbench. You select your last element, and then you make a new body based on that element. Then you can again do classic part design operations. For example, if we want to remove material with a rectangle through everything, it works. We've combined operations from both workbenches. You can see in the construction tree that it makes a nice mix. We have a base part that was created with the part design workbench, a part that was modeled with the part workbench. We merged that, and from this part, we recreated a part design part. You can combine operations almost infinitely according to your wishes. Regarding the interface, there are other handy little tools. For example, for measuring, we have a tool that lets you quickly get information about your part. Simply select one face, then the other face, and there you go. If you want the distance between two faces, you select both faces, it gives you the distance directly. For another measurement, you simply restart the operation. Regarding workbenches, some aren't necessarily present with the initial installation. To add them, simply go to Tools e add and Manager, and then you can choose the workbenches that interest you and install them. For example, there is the a Plus workbench for making assemblies. We'll talk about that later. There are all sorts of very useful workbenches that are very specific to particular professional needs. FreeCAD is a very general purpose software that serves all sorts of communities with quite different needs. You don't have the same needs if you're doing metallic mechanical construction, if you're building furniture, if you're doing architecture, simulation, machining, or optics. There's a whole diversity of needs, and in fact, you're free to create your own workbench if you have very specific needs. That's the magic of FreeCAD. Since it's open source, everything is free, everything is possible. You just need to know how to do it, be able to do it, and take the time to do it which is no small feat, but little by little, the software becomes very serious and allows, in my opinion, to do absolutely everything you need with modern CAD. To show you another very useful workbench, we have, for example, the sheet metal workbench. It's for sheet metal work. Here, my part is a bit thick, so it's not really a good example, but you can take a face and then bend it and extrude it as if it were sheet metal. Another very useful workbench is the fasteners workbench. It's for all standard elements. Here you can download, or rather import directly the bolts you need. They're already modeled. We're starting to have really many components according to various standards. It's really practical, you can import them and then use them directly in your models. Last workbench to complete the tour, the technical drawing workbench, techdraw.in. Here, you can make a drawing of your part. You select the orientation of your part, and then you have the classic drawing tools that allow you to create the drawing of your part. It's standard, you have the scale, and then you can hide construction points, make your dimensions if you need drawings. It's very practical. So, we've pretty much covered everything. I hope this will give you some leads to feel more comfortable with the software. We'll of course go into more detail in other videos. Did you like this content? Then subscribe, like, share, comment, I'm very curious to have your feedback.